Hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of JMP Outdoors. I'm your host Jason and man guys have I got an awesome video for y'all today. You ever been on a road trip driving through the back country and something goes wrong? You know, you get that gurgling in your gut, you're like, uh-oh, or, you know, maybe you're out on a remote lake and you get a cut or a stab or, you know, something happens to your hand, or you just flat out are in an emergency out on a, out on a backcountry road somewhere, you know. And God forbid you don't start hearing banjos. If you hear banjos, you know, well, then there's nothing this video is going to do for me. You're just screwed. But if you allow for me to take the time and kind of run through some things, you know, I think I can make you better prepared for what, you know, you might come across on your journeys. So sit right there. Grab a cold one, grab something to eat, and watch old Uncle Jason show all y'all beginners what emergency stuff you need in your truck or car. So, and just like that, we're going to be on. Yeah. All right. So, first of all, Always carry a first aid kit. Um, you don't have to go out and buy one of those real expensive ones. You can build them yourself. So, keep some throat and cough suppressants in your truck. Alright. These are little butterfly sutures. Those will be helpful. If you're out there and you cut your hand too bad. So put those in there. I don't have any gauze, but, you know, here's some tape. In case your cut's really bad, you can put some gauze on there and then tape it up with this. Or tape it up with this. They're both the same. Alright. Let's see. Wound closure strips. Basically, what these are is these are sutures or stitches to help close that wound until you can get to an area where you can get possibly better help like EMS or something like that. So these work good. Okay. Standard band-aids, you know, you got these small little dot ones and then you got your your standard band-aids those will work I'll put those in my kit um, some neosporin that will go in the kit and then like I said some more of the tape and the other stuff you need to get is saline solution which I don't have and some other type of like ointment or something for burns which is another thing I don't have so that's your first aid part of the kit you know so first aid then next knives I like these because in case you get real lost you know You've got some way of processing an animal, whether it's a rabbit, deer, whatever you may have to catch, clean, and cook. You know, this will work. So will this. This knife will work for cutting paracord, cutting your string. Um, I suggest you have some type of rope in your truck. Because you never know if you might need to 
make an emergency shelter. Now, I can't make an emergency, I don't have the stuff right now to do an emergency shelter, but it's real easy. There's all kinds of other YouTubers who can do emergency shelters. So that's that one. All right, next one is some kind of bag. Um, this is my bag. You know, it's got all kinds of pouches, stuff like that in there. You know, it's got stuff up front. You know, you can put first aid kits in here. You know, you can store stuff in these. And kind of what I have in this bag right now is a towel. Everybody needs a good towel. Preferably more than one. You can get them at, you know, any store carries, you know, like a cheap dish towel. Walmart, you know, Harbor Freight, Northern, Lowe's, Home Depot, any auto parts place has some kind of, has some kind of shop towel. So towel. For wiping hands, getting grease off, getting blood off, all that. Next one, toilet paper. I can't tell you how many times I have been out on the road and all of a sudden them damn bubble guts hit and I don't have any of this. All I have is a t-shirt that, you know, grandma gave you 15 years ago. Well, sometimes you just got to pull off, find a wood area, and say, I'm sorry, Grandma, I don't know what happened to your T-shirt, and go about your day. But make sure you keep toilet paper in your car. Men and women, this is very important. Hygiene. Next. Paper towels, but, you know, paper towels and regular towels, you know, they go hand in hand. So keep either one in your car. Next, alcohol. What you can do, a trick with this and this, which I'm not going to do right now, is you get an old metal jar. Preferably, one of the, if you can have them, if you can find them, preferably the old you know, metal coffee cans. You can stick this inside the coffee can, take your alcohol, and get this all wet. Light it. Guess what? If you're ventilated enough, you've got a damn, you got a damn portable heater to keep your ass warm. You know, that's if you can't afford to get a, a buddy heater or something like this. So this and this make heat. Okay, you can also use this to wash and sterilize your equipment, you know, pour some of this on your, on your knives, clean them, especially if you've been out fishing and have to gut something or clean something, always keep a bottle of 91% alcohol, you know, isopropylene alcohol in your car trust me you don't want to get you don't want to get sick because you touch something nasty and then you got you know cutie germs all over your hands so alcohol also wet wipes which i don't have all right 520 paracord which i don't think this is but paracord or some type of rope always keep in your car because it could honestly be a life changer because you don't know if you're going to have to string something together for a shelter in case you can't make it out. You know, you can take some of these trees, cut the limbs, and... 
bingo bongo you've got a freaking uh you can use this rope and string string limbs together and get you some kind of shelter made hammer I definitely suggest keeping some type of instrument that you can drive stuff in the ground with or use it to for like a long shank night that doesn't fold to where you can hit it and split wood so I definitely you don't have to be, be a big old hammer but something that you can you know pound a stake in the ground with or whatever but I definitely suggest a hammer um, fishing line definitely keep a fishing line with some small hooks and some small artificials or soft plastics you know in an emergency go bag because believe it or not you can take a stick, tie some line on it, throw it out. Oh, and little bobbers. You know, I suggest you keep little bobbers too. And throw this out in a creek somewhere, and you might be surprised and catch, catch some food, some fish, maybe even a turtle, bass, whatever you might need if you're in peril and need to, you know, do whatever so fishing line is a must and the heavier you know the lighter the better but I suggest you know this is this is fluorocarbon leader line but I would go with like a monofilament like 8 to 10 pound line for a good emergency all right next some type of toolkit with preferably um, pliers, screwdrivers, maybe a few of your basic half inch, nine sixteenths, three quarter inch um, wrenches, and definitely some kind of either needle nose or regular pliers to put in your kit. All right, next thing. Uh, cotton balls. Cotton balls are a must because cotton balls can be used to start fires. You can uh, take these and spread Vaseline on them or some kind type of um, gel or, or Vaseline or something like that because that stuff is um flammable or you could even use you know go back to your alcohol soak these in alcohol put them around your, your base of your little fire boom light it and you're good to go so there's a lot more stuff you can add uh, oh um some kind of water, bottled water. Um, even if you have to get one of those pumps that you know you can filter water through if you come across dirty water, one of those purifying pumps or water purifying kits. Um, definitely suggest having one of those. I don't, but you know. Or, or, you know, throw a, a couple of things of bottled water in your bag, you know. Because there's two things, if you get severely lost, people, that, that you really need to know. One, food. Two, water. Okay? You can go up to a month without food. You can't go seven days without without water 
uh, I think it's it's either 7 or 14 and you're gonna start hallucinating you're gonna start getting parts flips water is the key you know you don't want to get dehydrated so water 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 that's why I say keep a uh, one of those things that you pull in and suck out and it filters the water and then if need be some kind of little bowl like um, one of those um, kits that they sell at Walmart with all the little bowls for food I definitely suggest um, getting one of those kits and putting it in your bag so that way you can boil stuff you get the water you suck it in Start a fire real quick, boil it, pour it off, let it cool, and boom. You've got you've got water to survive. And oh the other thing that I don't have with this kit is a flare gun. Some way or a whistle. A whistle or a flare or a flare gun, some way to get noticed. You know, if you see a plane hovering up above and you've been gone for several days, pop out that flare gun and shoot it up in the air. Um, that's it. I hope you really enjoyed my, my little survival, you know, emergency kit that you can keep in your car. Um, so... Mm -mm. All right, remember, JMP Outdoors, like, subscribe, hit the notification button, hit the like button, and comment if y'all think I missed anything. All right, peace.